Let's talk about my most anticipated fantasy books coming out in the beginning of this year. I do this video every year where I go through my most anticipated fantasy. This year I will be doing both adult and YA fantasy in one video and this isn't going to be as extensive as I've done in the past because I really wanted to curate a list of fantasies that I am the most excited about and that I think that I will actually get to. And this video is going to cover January through June and then in July I will post another video for the second half of the year. There are a lot of really exciting books coming out, not only in fantasy but in other genres too, so I will also be doing a romance releases video that will come out sometime in the future, so keep your eye on the horizon for that. Let's jump into the first releases of the year and that is of course happening in this month of January. The first book that I have to talk about is Daughter of the Moon Goddess. Obviously this is probably the only one that I have in my possession so far because it's only January and I actually just started this today. I'm not that far in but so far it's just really lyrical and beautiful and reads like a fairy tale and of course I mean like this cover is just one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. In Daughter of the Moon Goddess, we follow Xin Ying, who is the daughter of Chang'e, which is a famous Chinese legend about the moon goddess and how she was exiled to live forever on the moon in solitude after she drank the elixir of immortality that was gifted to her husband. No one knows about Xin Ying, and so she must escape notice when the celestial empress uh, notices a change in the moon's aura. And so Xin Ying goes on a journey into the celestial empire in order to escape notice, and she's working towards being able to one day go back and free her mother from the curse that has her on the moon alone forever. Along the way, she seizes an opportunity to train alongside the, the Emperor's son, mastering many arts and flames of passion may even bloom between the two. This is a story of immortals, love, and chaos, and the start of a new duology. I am so far loving everything that I've read. I mean, I've only read like 63 pages, but it's just beautiful, and I feel like it's just going to really draw me into the world, and I'm going to adore everything about it. And this is an adult fantasy. Daughter of the Moon Goddess came out January 11th. Next up for January is Echoes and Empires by Morgan Rhodes. You may know Morgan Rhodes from the Fallen Kingdoms series. That's a six book series that came out a few years ago. And I read them all in audiobook two years ago, I want to say, and I loved them. They were such like a good, just like traditional adventure fantasy YA. I loved it so much. And so now I'm really looking forward to what she's going to be releasing in a brand new series. Joss knows that magic is illegal, rare, and deadly, but she's caught in robberies gone wrong at the Queen's Gala and is infected with a deadly piece of magic. Now she has access to an evil warlock's memories. The only one that can offer her a deal is notorious criminal Jericho Knox. He will help her extract the magic, but in return he wants the magic for himself. The closer that she grows with Jericho, the more she begins to question everything that she's ever known about her life. And this is the beginning of a duology, and because I just adore her as an author, I'm really looking forward to this one. This book actually came out on January 4th. The last book for January is Into the Midnight Void by Mara Fitzgerald and this is a sequel to Beyond the Ruby Veil. Beyond the Ruby Veil was gifted to me by my friend Maddie and it was one of her favorite books of 2020 and so I of course have to talk about the sequel in this video because I'm looking forward to reading both of them. The main character of this book is basically the definition of a chaos lesbian. So Emanuela doesn't want to be tied down to anything and so she is about to marry her best friend Alessandro because they are both gay and but their marriage will help them further each other in society. This marriage is not about love, it's about power. In this world there is one source of water and it is a creature known as the Water Kriya and if you are marked by the Water Kriya you must surrender yourself to this being. However, Emanuela has been hiding the tiny mark on her hip for years and she refuses to sacrifice her life for the greater good. The Water Kriya kidnaps Emanuela during her wedding and it ends in a bloody fight in which Emanuela kills the water Kriya. So now the people of their land are dying of thirst and she and her new husband must set out on a journey to find a new source of water for the land. It sounds like a very good mixture of like fun adventure but political commentary especially with like a water source and I'm very intrigued with this water source is like a being. It just seems very original and really cool. And so the sequel 
is out on January 25th. Moving on to February 1st, of course, we have House of Sky and Breath, the highly anticipated sequel to House of Earth and Blood, aka Crescent City, aka Sarah J. Mass's adult fantasy world. And I've heard it's much spicier, so like that's exciting too. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Crescent City is like this modern fantasy world in which there's all sorts of different orders of creatures that all belong to different houses and there's technology so it's like a really interesting mash of urban and high fantasy. Bryce Quinlan is just living her life. She is an, an assistant to an art curator by day and a party girl at night and she's just living her best life until her best friend is murdered in front of her one night. But with the accused behind bars and the murders starting again, Bryce is on a path for vengeance and she will do whatever she can to get revenge for the person that killed her best friend. Hunt Alathar is a notorious fallen angel and he is now a slave to the archangels and they put him on the case to figure out what is happening with these new murders and now he must team up with Bryce. If he does this, his freedom will be within reach. And so their journey begins. Ugh, it was so... Sarah J. Mash just does these incredible character journeys and this is just the beginning of the series. I honestly was blown away and I can't wait to see where book two takes us. Ugh, just thinking about it, like I want to reread it. I don't know. Maybe I should. Maybe I will. House of Sky and Breath is out February 15th. On February 1st, we have Castles in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian. This is the story of three princesses and three fates that they were born to. Seduction conquest and the crown. Princesses Safrina, Daphne, and Beatrice will be queens and now age 16 they must leave the castle to go marry their respective princes. They may seem smart, demure, and like the perfect wife but that's because their mother knows one common truth. Everyone underestimates a girl. They have been trained their entire lives in the arts of seduction, conquest, and violence with a singular goal in mind to bring down the other monarchy. So what happens when they set out to set their mother's grand plans into motion? princesses like it's giving like bridge kingdom vibes where like you think the bride is innocent but then like she's gonna kill you it's very exciting it seems like my kind of vibe next is only a monster by vanessa len which is out february 22nd it's a contemporary fantasy jonah sent to live with the eccentric side of her family in london but she's determined to enjoy herself she's wrapped up in a new job and it even has a date with her cute co-worker nick but what she learns is that her family is hiding a deep secret they're actually monsters and nick is a monster slayer as she battles nick joan has to work with Aaron oliver which is the heir to a monster family that hates her own monster family and if she wants to save herself and her family she needs to embrace her own inner monstrous in this house we love stories about monstrous girls so very excited love the cover seems awesome next is the girl who fell beneath the sea by axie O, and this is out february 22nd meanest people believe that the sea god is unhappy with them and causing floods and deadly storms that have been ravaging their lands thus every year they sacrifice a girl to the sea god by throwing her into the ocean and one day hoping that the sea god will like one of the girls and take her as his true bride. Many believe that Chong, the most beautiful girl in the village and the beloved of Mina's older brother, June, is the one that will be the true bride. However, in the night that she is thrown into the sea, June goes out and follows her down. Mina will do anything to save her brother and so she dives in after them. Mina is then swept away into the spirit realm where she finds that the sea god is actually asleep and so with the help of a mysterious young man named Shin, Mina sets out to wake the sea god. Oh, it just sounds like beautiful, lyrical, amazing, the cover is gorgeous, it just sounds like something I'll love. Next is The War of Two Queens by Jennifer L. Armentrout which is the fourth book in the From Blood and Ash series. I'm going to hold up my nice bookish box exclusive edition because I'm obsessed with it. Um, From Blood Nash is the story of Poppy who is a maiden that is living in the Duke's tower. She has this veil on her head and she cannot be seen or heard or talked to anyone other than her attendant. She doesn't really want to live this life where she's silent but she's heard that everything relies on her and the day that she ascends. She is complacent in this role until a golden-eyed guard named Hawk comes along and makes her question everything that she's ever believed in. He ignites her temper like no other but really makes her question her life thus far as the maiden and it's just everything to me. I love the series so much. I cannot wait. I will be doing a specific reading vlog for the War of Two Queens um, as well as I'll be reading Shadow in the Ember because I haven't read that one yet and that's the spin-off series of From Blood Nash. 
This is the book that got me started on my fantasy romance kick and I just am obsessed with it. The War of Two Queens is out March 15th. Then another favorite author, V.E. Schwab, is releasing a new YA book and that is Gallant. Or Gallant? Gallant? I hope I'm saying it right whichever way. Gallant? I think it's Gallant. This one is out March 1st. So let me just read you the tagline. Everything casts a shadow, even the world we live in. And as with every shadow, there is a place where it must touch, a seam where the shadow meets its source. So Olivia has been growing up in this school for girls and she gets a letter to come home to a place known as Gatland. But when she arrives, no one is expecting her. Olivia's not about to leave the first place that feels like home, especially when she's about to unravel its secrets. When she crosses a wall at just the right moment, she finds, her, she finds herself in a place that is Gatland, but also not. Will Olivia be able to stand up to the master of the house in the shadow realm. It sounds so good. It does kind of give darker shade of magic vibes with like the different realms, but I like that concept of shadows. I'm very excited. Also, this cover is just like a different size than like other book covers, and I think the book is going to be weirdly sized. That's just, I don't know. Coming out on March 29th is A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lin. Lin unknowingly killed her mother by brewing a poison tea. The very same tea that now threatens to take her sister. Ning joins a competition to find the Empire's greatest tea master so that she may be granted a favor from the princess, which could be her only opportunity to save her sister. I love tea, so I feel like I'll like this book. In April, we have Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. It is out on April 5th. Okay, I'm just gonna read the tagline in the back because I feel like it sums it up perfectly. Greetings, traveler. Welcome to the legendary Hotel Magnifique. Your trip to elsewhere begins now. Our offerings include an abundance of delightful enchantments and dangerous secrets, a vexingly handsome doorman with a mysterious past, a ruthless maitre d', intent on obtaining power at any cost, a dark conspiracy at the heart of the world's most famous magical hotel, and one girl determined to tear it all down for the sake of saving her sister. Prepare to depart by midnight. It just has all of the magical hotel vibes. I love stories like this. I'm very excited. On May 31st, we have The Merciless Ones, which is a sequel to The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. In Dekka's village, there is a ceremony that determines your fate. If your blood runs gold, you are outcast. Then a mysterious woman comes to her village with a choice. You can join the Gilded Ones or you can face your fate alone. When there, she learns that she's actually Alakai and her golden blood gives her rare abilities. And they are the only ones that can stop the Empire's greatest threat. I mean, I love this cover. The sequel cover is also gorgeous and it just seems like a beautiful immersive fantasy. My friend Keely read this and she said it's one of her favorite YA fantasies of 2021. So I'm excited. Next we have Forging Silver into Stars by Bridget Kemmerer. This book is out May 3rd, and this is a spin-off series of a Curse So Dark and Lonely trilogy. It takes place five years after the end of A Vassal Bold and Deadly. And in this book, we are following Tycho, who is a beloved side character of everyone in the original series. And basically, he's tasked to do something for the ruler and, un and uncover an anti-magic faction. And we will be following the story of him and some of these people in the anti-magic faction. It's very exciting. I... I love when we get to just spend more time in worlds that we have grown to adore and I love the Curse Breakers trilogy. I finished it this year and I'm really looking forward to this one. Coming up on May 14th, we have Glow by Raven Kennedy. This is the fourth book in the Plato Prisoner series, which I have the first one here, Guild. This is a King Midas retelling and King Midas has turned Auron to gold and she lives in the, the palace in a literal gilded cage. Um, she thinks that she is happy there, but she begins to realize that a gilded cage is still a cage and it's the story of her coming to terms with what has happened to her and I've heard it's just an amazing series and I really really want to read this one so I'm looking forward to the fourth one coming out but I think I'll probably read the trilogy even before the fourth one comes out in May and I love the cover I love the hardcover resigns redesigns that were done previously and this is like a new adult slash adult fantasy romance series the last book for May is an adult fantasy by Holly Black. Very much looking forward to her adult debut with, with Book of Night. I mean, look at the cover. I love it. This is out May 3rd. In this world, shadows can be manipulated, but manipulating the shadows takes a toll on you. It could take hours or days from your life. Your shadow holds all the parts of you that you want to keep hidden your second self. Charlie is a low-level con artist working in the shadow trade. She's determined to survive and she throws herself in a maelstrom of shadows, secrets, 
and a murderer. Very exciting. It's compared to Ninth House and the Night Circus, so I love that kind of like lyrical, like kind of set in the real world, kind of not adult fantasy. I'm very excited. And lastly for June, we have The Blood Traitor by Lynette Noni, and this is the third book in the Prison Healer trilogy. And this book is out June 14th. Kiva has been working the past 10 years as the prison healer, keeping the most notorious prisoners alive. When the Red Queen, the leader of the rebellion, is captured, she is tasked with keeping her alive long enough to undergo trials by ordeal. A coded message from Kiva's family lets her know that the Red Queen is not to die, but she knows that these trials will kill the Queen, and so she decides to take the Queen's place in these elemental trials. Very exciting. This book has been blurred by Sarah J Mass, and I feel like it's gotten a lot of buzz and I haven't picked it up yet, but I feel like it's something I will enjoy. And the third book is out in June. The last book that I have to talk about today is Blade Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. This is the sequel to Realm Breaker, which I've been meaning to get to and haven't gone to yet. Surprise, surprise. Uh, Realm Breaker is basically, uh, Victoria Aveyard has described it as what happens when varsity fails and the JV team has to step in. Here we follow Corianne, who is told that she's the last of a powerful lineage and so she must go on an adventure with a ragtag team of people to stop a man that is determined to take over the empire. It just sounds like a good old like getting the team together and going on an adventure type of fantasy novel and I love those types of things. I love Red Queen from Victoria Aveyard. It's what got me back into reading YA um, right after college. So she holds a special place in my heart and I'm really looking forward to her what she does with a new series. And yes, the sequel is out in June. Okay, and that is all for my list of my most anticipated fantasies that are coming out in the first half of 2022. Please let me know down below in the comments what is the fantasy you are most looking forward to in the first half of this year, and leave a little sword emoji if you watched this far. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy my content, and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.